I don't mind watching the occasional Joe Rogan podcast. I don't watch them all, mainly because I don't have the time, and also because a lot of the guests I'm just not that interested in. But I can understand why his podcast is so popular. He's got a very laid-back interview style where the guests are pretty much free to talk about anything they want. Network television interviews tend to be more formal and planned out. Things are much more controlled and censored. During Rogan's interviews, guests tend to open up a lot more. They tend to swear, they sometimes drink, and on a number of occasions, they've smoked some of Rogan's marijuana. Rogan himself happily drinks alcohol, smokes weed, and swears like a trooper during many of his interviews, depending on the guest, of course. And that's what I'd like to talk about today, Joe Rogan's contradictory, healthy lifestyle. From the small number of Joe Rogan interviews that I have seen, he seems to be fairly focused on his health. He works out regularly, he takes vitamins and supplements, he regularly discusses health topics, and often invites doctors onto the podcast. These are the behaviours of a healthy person, or at least a person who wants to be healthy. I'm not here to comment on which supplements he takes, but instead, I just wish to talk about his unhealthy pastimes. I know he drinks alcohol, I've seen it for myself a number of times during his interviews. He sometimes talks about going out with his friends and getting smashed. Of late, he seems to be smoking marijuana mixed with tobacco. I find it surprising that a person who is so fixated on their health happily goes out and drinks too much and smokes weed mixed with tobacco. With all we know about the health effects of alcohol and tobacco, it just doesn't make much sense to me. I'm not trying to judge. I'm happy for people to live their lives in any way they see fit, as long as they don't hurt other people in the process. But for somebody who is obviously trying to be healthy and live a long life, Joe Rogan is making some major mistakes. When I go to see a new doctor, the first thing they ask is, do you smoke? And do you drink? According to the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, smoking is the single most important preventable cause of ill health and death in Australia. Alcohol use comes in third. For your interest, being overweight or obese comes in second. So obviously, to live a healthy life, you shouldn't drink or smoke, and you should keep your weight in check through diet and exercise. So Rogan pretty much does everything correctly, except that he smokes and drinks, two of the biggest risk factors that contribute to premature death. It reminds me of my recent trip to China. Chinese men, at least the ones I've met, are fairly health conscious. They take fish oil capsules, herbal remedies, eat lots of vegetables, and tend to be fairly slim. My father-in-law often cooks dinner. It seems to be one of his hobbies. He takes great delight in cutting up all the vegetables, skinning the fish, boiling the dumplings, and watching everyone enjoy his creation. But yet, he regularly smokes. He often drinks. When he's out with friends or the extended family, he puts on his drinking cap and slams them down. Every five minutes, he'll have another cigarette, and I found this to be quite the norm in China. Men, when they get together, spur each other on to drink more and smoke excessively. If you refuse to drink, they'll pretty much force you. I was caught out a number of times. So during my five-week trip to China, I pretty much drank every day for the first three weeks. I found a way to not have to smoke. My wife has convinced the family that I'm a non-smoker, something that they sometimes find hard to comprehend. But despite this, they always offer me a cigarette, and I always refuse. But refusing to drink is like refusing to shake someone's hand. It's an insult to them. Ladies can somewhat get away with it, or if you've recently had surgery, you can get away with it. But generally speaking, men have to drink. It's a social expectation and requirement. So I drank. I typically drank in moderation, but occasionally I had to drink more. During the Mongolian wedding, I drank way too much. I don't know exactly what happened, but I felt like death when I woke up. I was just happy that I did wake up. I didn't even know I was sleeping. I could have been dead in a ditch somewhere, and I wouldn't have known. That was the day I decided to stop drinking in China. I was done. My body was done. My liver was done. I just didn't have the ability to drink anymore. I would see other people drinking and feel physically sick. I would walk past liquor shops and want to throw up. Alcohol became my enemy. Even on my return to Australia, when I walk past the bottle shop, I feel ill. I think I've destroyed my mental tolerance for alcohol. And that's good. I don't want to drink that godforsaken liquid anymore. I'm now officially sober. But boy, the act of not drinking in China was met with lots of criticism. When I first refused to drink, it was met with laughter. The extended family all thought I was joking. They cracked open a bottle of beer for me, poured me a glass, and put both down in front of me. When they made a toast, as drunk Chinese men tend to do very often, I just pretended to drink. I didn't let that cursed liquid touch my mouth. They didn't seem to notice as they were all too pissed. 
A couple of days later, some of the extended family came over to our place to celebrate something or other, the second rising of the third crescent moon or whatever. Of course, they brought over a carton of beer and a bottle of baijiu. I was like, do these people ever stop drinking? This time, I was angry. I was angry at the forced poisoning. And that's what you're doing, isn't it? You're poisoning yourself when you drink too much alcohol. So I decided that I wasn't going to let them pour me a drink. I was going to be strong and say no. I tried to be polite about it, but it simply wasn't working. I raised my voice a little and told them again. The cousin seemed a bit upset with me. He told me that he had gone out of his way to buy some beer for me so that we could drink together. I politely told him that I was sorry, but I wouldn't be able to drink, as I wasn't feeling very well. He accepted, but went on to ignore me the entire night. And that's what happens when you don't drink in China. You are ignored. I've only seen one other male not drink, and it was one of my wife's cousins. He's very much an otaku, a Japanese nerd. He's not Japanese, of course, but he loves Japanese culture. He doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. When he's out with his extended family, he orders his grape drink while the rest of the men smoke and get drunk. They pretty much ignore him throughout. I feel a bit sorry for him, actually. He's a nice guy. He's intelligent. He's kind and caring, but he doesn't drink, and consequently, he's destroyed his social life in the process. You see, in China, you have to drink. If you don't drink, and you're a man, you'll become a social outcast. I realized on my return to Australia that I probably can't go back to China. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't eat meat. In the eyes of the average Chinese man, I've got nothing to offer them. I come from a democracy. I believe in freedom of speech. To them, I'm just the strange foreigner that's married to one of their cousins. Of course, I'm somewhat joking about not returning to China, but I know it will be hard. That recent trip has taught me one thing. Drinking is not for me. Smoking is not for me. Polluting my body with chemicals is not for me. I want to live a clean life. I think more clearly when I'm not slamming down alcoholic beverages. I think more clearly when I'm not pepped up on caffeine. I feel physically ill when I'm in a room full of smokers. Occasionally, I might drink a nice cup of green tea, but alcohol is not on the menu. I see no benefit in drinking it anymore. It hurts me. It hurts me physically as well as mentally. So there we go. This is probably the first time you've heard someone compare Joe Rogan to a Chinese man, but they both fit into the category of health-conscious people who drink and smoke. Rogan seems to have woken up about his health in recent years and does so many things to maintain it, but his drinking habit and his smoking habit are the exceptions in his life. Just for your interest, I'll finish with a quick translation of Joe's name into Mandarin. Zhou is a very common surname. It's actually my wife's surname. Rogan actually means sensual. So we could translate Joe Rogan's name to literally mean sensual Joe. Pretty funny, eh? Chinese men, Joe Rogan, they've got a lot more in common than you might think. Cheers.